All right, hello everyone. Leroy Diesel here. Going to give you a warning that this is not my normal 6.5 diesel stuff. You know, I'm not doing a video on 6.5 stuff in this video. So if uh, you tuned in to see 6.5 diesel parts or equipment or videos, you can actually turn it off right now. This is going to be on a Honda Ridgeline. This is uh, the 2006 through 2014 model. And what this is, on the left, I have a spindle, knuckle, whatever terminology you want to use, also on the right, but this one is off of a Honda Odyssey. This one is off of my Ridgeline. The main difference is this one is going to give me the bearing that bolts on. So this is a hub bearing assembly where the original 06 to 14 ridge lines were press in. I'll flip this around in a second and uh, show you more of that. Uh, the Odyssey is almost a direct bolt in. It's so close. When I saw one, I was like, oh my God, I got to try that. But I'm going to get the ad advantage of having a bolt on wheel bearing. And then also I'm going to go with the bigger brakes off of a 2010 that body style Honda Pilot. So I'll do that in a separate modification later. Right now I'm concentrating on trying to get the spindles in. It's taken me a couple weeks of brainstorming and trying to figure this out. So let me get into it. And coincidentally, the tie rod end on a Honda Ridgeline and the Odyssey is the same exact tie rod. The problem is on let me see if we can get it. Oop, knock the camera down. On the um, ridge line, it's designed to come in from the top, as you see here. On the Odyssey, it's designed to come in from the bottom, like that. Well, terrible lighting here. Anyway, you have to trust me it's designed to come in from the bottom so that puts the tie rod at a really bad angle because you're trying to reach uh, underneath um, let me get my thoughts straight here yeah so on a ridge line because it's coming in from the top now in order to reach on if let's say this was the odyssey then you would have to extend the tie rod and you're coming in from underneath that also puts the angle of it at a, at a much different angle so what we've done here is we I machined a sleeve that will go on to the tie rod but what I've got to do let me flip this over is drill this hole to a 7 8 square hole square hole sounds kind of weird but it just means it's the same dimension all the way through so it'll be a 7 8 inch hole that'll drop in from the top which then allows me to come back in from the top which keeps that angle perfect um, another modification that you'll have to do is on this opening the half shaft is not going to fit in there because the ridge line is bigger. So I just took a die grinder and a carbide uh, bit and I just went around here very carefully and wallow, not wallowed, but uh, opened this up until that ridge line shaft would fit in there. Now, what I did discover is a factory Honda shaft is bigger than the shaft I'm using. And so with a Honda, genuine Honda half shaft, this modification may or may not work because it's it's a lot bigger and uh, you'd have to take out a lot more material here. So that would be up to you. The, the half shaft I did wind up using is a track motive and uh, it, it only required um, a little bit of material to be taken out of here and then it fit in there. Also, there's a sheet metal 
I'll call it a flange, which is on the end of the half shaft where it goes into this and that has to be removed. As a matter of fact, let me run over and grab it real quick. Sorry, I should have had that ready to go. But when you have your half shaft, and you, you'll see, when you see it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. On the end of the half shaft, this kind of would sit up in here, or I think it goes this way. It doesn't really matter which way it goes, but it needs to come off because it will, when you suck the axle nut down on the other side, it'll cause it to bind and nothing will rotate. So that's kind of the highlights on this whole modification. Um, you see here also that you this is for the bolt-on wheel bearing hub where the ridge line doesn't have it it's all pressed in and it's not the end of the world you know you can reuse your ridge line bearings that's no problem at all uh, I'm just quirky in the fact I like to do different things make different things work with different applications um, and make just make things work another modification though that i'm now thinking of is the strut spacing is different and the ridgeline bolts are bigger so what i did is i opened up the bottom hole on the odyssey spindle to match the size of the audit of the uh, ridgeline but the upper one i kept the same and what i've got to do is Again, with my die grinder and a smaller carbide bit, I machined out the actual strut so that this will now fit on a ridgeline strut. So once you do these modifications, this, make this hole bigger, open this up, um, and you have the sleeve, which you would have to have a machine shop do that, and then you drill this hole, once you modify this, this does become a bolt-on application. And then, I'm sorry, there's one last thing. I'm sitting here looking at parts. Is the when you, If you go to the junkyard and you get a spindle, make sure you get the wheel sensor or at least a lead. I didn't know that at the time, so they cut it real short. You know, me not even knowing I was going to need it, they didn't know either, so they just kind of cut it when they took it off. But ask for as long as possible of a lead here so you can solder that. I already did the driver side, but the, the uh, sensor is a little bit longer on this one, let me show you, than on the ridge line. So you'll need this sensor and you'll just cut it and, and solder it onto your ridge line. I'm sorry, this is the ridge line one. This is the one I cut off. So you'll need the Odyssey version of this and you can see that that did not come down into uh, you know where it's supposed to be and when you when you got all this in your hand you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here I'm trying to make a quick video so that I don't bore you to death Let me see if uh, I can get that zoomed in so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So I don't know if you can see it right there, the tip of that. Let me get my glove out of the way. Right here. The lighting is absolutely terrible. But it comes through and that's what's going to pick up the sensor in the bearing itself. And on the ridge line, it's shorter. So on the Odyssey, it's a little bit longer. And I bought a complete Odyssey uh, wire assembly here. The, I forget what they call it. The wheel speed sensor. Let me get zoomed back out. Yeah, the wheel speed sensor. I bought it brand new. But it turns out you really can't use it. So what, I'm, what I did is I just modified took the Odyssey one from the junkyard and put it on my Ridgeline original harness and it was just two wires you solder them together and that, I think that was the best option so I'm gonna splice together a couple videos here um, I'll show you what the 
full assembly looks like on the driver's side on, on, a, on the next video kind of go through and explain what I did again and then um, I'm gonna do the passenger side and I'll explain hopefully step by step if I don't get too lazy on what you need to do we'll see you in the next one okay so here we are over at the ridge line this is the driver's side and all the brake assembly I've got brand new in, in in there in the shop and that's going to be for a separate either I, I may or may not do a video on that but for now I'm trying to concentrate on getting the spindle in here so what you you can see now that the tie rod is on top of the knuckle what they call on top of the knuckle instead of coming from underneath that would have changed that angle drastically and probably would have given steering problems bump steer you know it would it would have given issues so brand new tie rod and I drilled the knuckle like I showed you in the last video there's a sleeve in there with the proper taper and once that actually gets nutted down from underneath it actually kind of sucks that tie rod and makes it even tighter in that sleeve the sleeve is split so it can actually expand inside the new hole inside the knuckle and it makes it really super tight um, you can see the half shaft down there again this is a track motive half shaft and it's smaller the cup is smaller than like a factory Honda Ridgeline so I'm not for sure if this modification would even work with a factory Honda part because um, it's just bigger uh, which is good thing you know as far as probably being more heavy-duty and all of that but it's not gonna work with this spindle at least I don't think it will um, so on the strut it's very close on the bolt dimension here the lower bolt hole on the spindle I did have to open that up to to accommodate the larger ridgeline bolt on the upper I left the spindle alone but I did take my carbide uh, bit on a die grinder while this was out of the truck and uh, went downwards, kind of a, a downward cut and made that fit. Now also the, Hon the uh, Ridge, ah, sorry, the Odyssey spindle is a little bit narrower in this dimension. So all I did is I took two washers uh, these I forget what size they are they, they accommodate the larger bolt uh, probably a 5 8 washer I honestly I've forgotten but you, you know you basically see what I got here so a washer on each side here a washer on each side below and that thing fit perfect it was nice and snug it's not going anywhere once you tighten these bolts it's it's in there um, I believe what this is going to do for me too is when I take it to the alignment shop is it's going to give me a little bit of a camber adjustment if needed um, and so I think that's about all to this modification I'm making it look a whole lot more simple than it is the the main benefits again are you're going to get a bolt-on wheel bearing assembly um, that may or may not be an important to you but to me it's always kind of like the challenge of can I do something and then also I'm going to be upgrading to the pilot brakes which is a bigger caliper and a slightly bigger rotor um, so those two things combined kind of made it intriguing to me so I said I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try uh, so the next videos will be me on the passenger side probably showing you a little more detail on what I did um, oh, and one other thing, just because uh, I'm seeing it and it's coming to mind, is this uh, wheel speed sensor wire. This is where I cut this side. It was two wires, re soldered that, heat shrinked it, and all of that. And it, it obviously from there it fits perfect because it's a ridgeline wire at that point. So I only had to use from the tip side, uh, the, the, the wheel side of the wire from the Odyssey. And so be sure and try and get as long of a length of wire as you can if you ever decide to try and do this modification yourself. Um, the bearings themselves are nice bearings. They're Timken. That's what I went with. I think there's a, a, a few choices out there. The Moog on the tie rod end. The Moog on the lower 
uh, control arm, and then uh, the Monroe, I think is what the strut is. Um, and I've also got brand new uh, stainless steel brake line that'll be going in when I do the brake job. And then obviously the new half shaft. So I can't think of anything else. I will again try to show a little more detail on the passenger side. Thanks. Okay guys, so this is the next uh, clip in this series. What I've got here is the Honda Odyssey knuckle or spindle, depending on what terminology you like. And uh, I just got done drilling out two holes and I'll show you what those are. On the, on the Honda Ridgeline original strut uh, bolt, which actually is in a picture there, I'm talking about in this location on the strut itself um, you, you have a bigger bolt right here it's a bigger diameter than what will come with the Odyssey so I drilled the uh, lower bolt so it would accept that so I had to drill that one and also the originally on the Odyssey the uh, tie rod would come in from underneath on this side like that with the tie rod but on the ridge line it comes in on top and I wanted to maintain that angle of the steering so I've, we machined this um, bushing that's a tapered bushing drilled a straight hole here which is a 7 8 hole which allows that let me spin that which allows that tapered insert to go in there and now my Honda Ridgeline also which is the same as the Odyssey tie rod end will go right in there I'll put the nut down once I tighten that nut it'll actually suck down that tie rod and expand in that hole the sleeve has a slit in it so that it can expand once this taper meets that one and it's I don't know how to describe it, just it gets sucked down into that hole much tighter than if it didn't have that little slit. So that's um, kind of it on, on, on what I've done so far. Uh, this is the passenger side and I'm going to show you over here I have my Makita die grinder. Um, let me get that box opened up. That's a... Um, strut from Monroe. Let me make sure this camera is not going to fall down. Okay. Also, the new strut is going to come with three new nuts which are in the box. I would actually recommend you reuse the original nuts. Those ones that come in the box are kind of cheap looking to me. Um, so what I've got to do, let me, I'm trying to keep all this in the viewfinder here. Let's see if I'm in the, okay. Uh, get a bolt here so to hold it in place. What I'm gonna do next So what I'm going to do next is I've got that lower bolt in there to, to keep its position and it's not off by much. You can sort of see some of the hole, the original Odyssey hole sticking out right there. But I'm going to take that die grinder and take maybe half an inch. Oop, sorry, looking at my work and not looking through the viewfinder. So I'm going to take, you can see the hole on the original Odyssey kind of peeking through there right there and I'm gonna take and wallow out with the die grinder just enough material until the uh, bolt 
will go through there. Um, also, I'll probably give this information again in the, in the next clip, but the original Odyssey bolts that go here are actually too short. And what I found is that the bolt on the original ridge line, the front lower control arm bolt, uh, is the same diameter as the as the Odyssey. It's a it's just a longer bolt. I think it's a 16 millimeter by 100, and it's going to be perfect. So I got two of those ordered. Um, when I get those, I'll put that in the clip and post the part number, all that good stuff. Um, uh, each bolt was about seven bucks and pretty heavy duty bolt, so I thought it was a pretty good deal. Um, so I'm not going to bore you with watching me grind this out, but I will get that done and then post a really quick video of that done with a bolt in there. So we'll see you on the next one. Okay, so here it is about five or ten minutes later. Got my Makita there with the burr on it, carbide burr, and um, didn't even have to wear out a battery on it. So the battery's still good. So that gives you any indication of how long it took. This thing may still be hot. No, it's okay. Anyway, to show you what I did there, had to bring that hole down. I still haven't even cleaned it up. I'm going to shoot it with some spray paint, but that you can see that goes through there now. And I've got the other bolt, which is going to be a longer bolt, on order. Should be here, I don't know, this week sometime. And that will go in place of there, and we'll catch you on the next clip. Okay, um, so on to the next clip. This may be the last clip, maybe. There may be one more if I decide to go through and show you the brake system. Uh, so anyway, what we've got here is I've got the passenger side knuckle installed. I'm just going to kind of sit down over here and talk to you about things as I see them. Some of it will be a repeat because I've already done the driver side and showed that to you. So get in here so got my soldering iron what I'm gonna do is uh, cut the uh, tip of the sensor that came off of the ridge I mean the uh, Odyssey like I have here and then I'm gonna cut this off and I'm gonna solder that in there and I've got all my heat shrink and solder gun love this butane solder gun by the way and now i just broke it no i'm kidding uh so i'm gonna get that done um got the caliper hanging over there on a hook it's not hanging from the hose it may look like it um and the half shaft turns pretty nice now um so I showed you all the modifications that were going to be needed there to get the half shaft in there. You have to open up the back a little bit. It, the, it's got the uh, bolt-on wheel bearing now. I'm going to go with the bigger brakes. Um, the modif Oh, by the way, in any of the, these clips, I've never said, but the lower ball joint is a direct fit. There's no modification there needed. It's a little bit different shape on the spindle itself on the ridge line it's more of a cup looking arrangement on this one it's just kind of more traditional I and mean, you probably you can look at the previous video and see what i'm talking about um back here i, I showed you that i had to drill that 7 8 hole that's where i put the machine tapered insert so the tie rod fits in here perfectly now um this lower bolt is from the ridge line but on the Odyssey, it has to be the hole on the knuckle itself has to be enlarged to accommodate that bolt. The upper bolt will still be the uh, Odyssey bolt. So um, I, I'm actually getting two new bolts because these are just borderline too short. So I just got them in here temporarily. I think this coming Wednesday or whatever, I should have the new bolts. And I'll zip those in there and that'll be good. The, the Odyssey nut will work on the new bolt. So if you're going junkyarding, 
just get the whole bolt with the nut that way you got them for some future project but you're mainly going to need the nut um, got all that torque down got the new Monroe strut in here and sure feel like I'm just repeating myself and that I'm running out of things to say oh one thing I did do is I replaced the intermediate shaft which is way up in there and I've never seen anybody do a video on YouTube on that so I was thinking I should have done that but I didn't so there's still no video <laughs> um, but one hint I will give you let me sh actually let me show you on the ground here because I have one here um, it's going to be in that kind of a configuration where the transmission it, it, it inserts into the transmission over here and then this is the outer side which is where that CV boot is sorry this thing's on my tripod and it's banging on everything so the CV boots right up there that's what would connect right here oh and by the way on the new one I took that damn C clip off of it because if you don't if you do have that C clip installed which you probably will if you're doing this job from scratch I've done a couple of these and it's just about impossible to get this half shaft off of there uh, without having to take all this off and pull it all out in one unit if somebody else out there's got a trick to that let me know but I beat on it pride on it everything that we could reasonably do and finally we just had to unbolt it but getting back to the installation of one of those is you're gonna have a heat shield here because the exhaust is right there and it, that heat shield protects the CV joint the rubber and all of that so getting in here is very difficult but this bolt in particular right there that one I found that it was easy just to kind of reach up from the CV side up and over and then you could get a wrench in there and work it like I mean millimeters at a time you could work a wrench you know just using everything that wrench has to offer you know how you can flip a wrench and that gives you another angle and then flip it back and get another little turn and sometimes you got to flip it over to the box and get another little turn but finally after a few minutes of working it it'll get finger tight and if you're pretty limber with your fingers you can get in there and get that um, this one's actually kind of difficult because the CV joints here but it's doable and that one's real easy to get to um, so if you're doing a ridgeline intermediate shaft hopefully that might help you and I'm getting off subject here a little bit because I was talking about Honda Odyssey knuckles doing the conversion on a ridgeline and that's all those videos you just watched um, one last little detail again I, as I see things I'm just gonna tell you about them but I have these bolts on the lower control arm front and rear loose so when this sits back on the ground those bushings won't be in a bind right because they're in this kind of position right now if I torque those up then those bushings when I set it on the ground are really gonna get stressed on the other side and so will those so once it's on the ground I'm gonna torque those and kinda it'll be in a ha nice happy place there um, so a little tip there um, that's all I can think of if I decide to uh, get motivated and do the brakes I'll show you that and I'll kinda compare the sizes and the brake pads are bigger and all of that on what I'm going to plus the rotors a little bigger and it's drilled and slotted and all that good stuff um, so I will see you guys on the next one have a good one okay so I did decide to break out the brakes and um, I won't probably show the installation but just show the differences so the 2010 body style Honda Pilot the the brake calipers and rotors will fit directly onto a ridgeline and they're just slightly bigger but if you've got to do the job anyway you might as well go with a little better uh, system so right here I've got the rotor the brand new one is underneath and all the way around it's roughly a quarter inch diameter bigger um, so that would be roughly half an inch total bigger um, let me push that to the edge 
Yeah, right there is about the edge. So, I don't know, I'm eyeballing that about half an inch. Um, and then also the brand new rotor is drilled and slotted. So that's a good thing too. The caliper itself, I measured the pistons and it was an um, inch seven hundred thousandths, I believe exactly. Let me, I'm going to do this off camera real quick and then bring it in. Yeah, so let's see if you can read that. Well, you're going to have to trust me. It's an inch seven hundred thousandths, exactly. The uh, old one, the original one, was like an inch 580. Let's see if we can get that in there. I'm gonna make sure that's in the viewfinder. Yeah, so I've got the the old one here. This was an inch seven hundred thousandths. This one is an inch five hundred and ninety thousandths. So again, it's just a little bigger there, but you get more piston area pushing over a wider area on the brake pad itself. Uh, got the stainless steel lines that are going to go on there too. And oh, one other little tip is um, when you're putting these screws back in, the screws that hold the rotor, again, I got to make sure I'm in the viewfinder there. Yeah, so in the, let me get this rotor too so I can show you. These, these little tiny screws, these countersunk screws that hold the rotor on there, its only purpose is just to hold the rotor on there until you can get the all the brake system on get the wheel bolted on there's no reason to torque this get it in there hand tight that's it um, if you go torquing on that thing trying to tighten it down the next guy's never gonna be able to get it out as a matter of fact when I did this one I was using my impact driver uh, you know an impact screwdriver which is meant for this you, the kind that you use a hammer on and it just broke it off and so I had to wind up drilling it out luckily it was just one screw all the others came out fine and then the last little tip is to replace let me get I gotta stand up so I can get in my pocket here yeah to replace these screws right here Go to the hardware store, do yourself a favor, and get a stainless steel countersunk screw. It looks just like that. But instead of Phillips head, it's going to have a number six Allen. And uh, that will make your life so much nicer the next time around. I also spread anti seize everything on here. Got a coat of anti seize on the threads. Um, I'm not going to do the brake caliper. Uh, bracket but I am gonna do the sliders uh, with some anti-seize um, I got these at Lowe's and it's a Hel Hillman part number oh uh, where is the part number well I don't know which one of these is a the part number there's a bunch of numbers on here but it's a M6 by 100 by 16 and I would recommend you go get however many your truck needs of those and uh, it'll make your life or the next guy's life a lot easier so just wanted to show you that and then uh, hopefully I, if um, I got time or whatever I might show it to you the whole thing installed I'm not doing the installation right now because I just don't want to open up the hydraulic system just yet I just don't have a drain bucket here and I'm not just not ready for that so let's catch you on the next one Okay, so I think this is going to be the last video in this series to uh, just uh, refresh though if you just kind of come into this video. 
basically what I did is I put a Honda Odyssey knuckle, spindle, whatever you want to call it, on a Honda Ridgeline. Um, 2006 through 2014 Ridgeline. This is a 2011 through 2017 Odyssey. The main difference is it gave, it gave me the uh, bolt-on wheel bearing assembly, which is here and obviously covered up now. You can look at the previous video. Uh, also went with the bigger brakes from a pilot. They're just slightly bigger. Um, so the, the main reason for this last clip is I think I said it in the previous one that I was that this bolt was just kind of borderline too short and if you order a bolt for a Honda Ridgeline for the front lower control arm it's longer and I got a little excited because I kind of was just in my head eyeballing it and it's actually a little bit too long so I'm gonna have to stack up a couple like four washers two washers on each side these big I don't know what these are five eighths maybe three quarter washers but you just have to go to the hardware store and size them up so I've got two here and two over here and you can see just right here that that bolt is the one that's installed is quite a bit longer and this bolt out of the writ out of the um, Odyssey was just borderline too short because the bolt threads didn't want to go all the way through the nut it was kind of just barely sticking out of the nut like sorry I'm putting the tripod down the uh, nut was kind of like that and it really needs to be fully engaged and that it's not going on there real smooth right now but you know what I'm talking about and so with this one it is absolutely a hundred percent fully engaged and so if you technically wanted to find yourself a bolt you could probably go with a 16 by 80 millimeter something like that this one is a 16 by 100 but if you just get some washers it's going to work just fine the part number if you want to purchase that bolt see if i can get that in focus and you can pause the video and grab that but i'll tell you what it is here it is a 90118-SJC-A00 so if you're thinking about doing this job you may want to grab a couple of those bolts in advance or if you're hard working enough you may find one slightly shorter so that you don't need these washers um, so just kind of a back up and show you one last time the, the overview got the power stop brakes or I should say calipers comes with the backing I mean the uh, bracket the caliper bracket got the drilled and slotted rotors which were maybe a half inch larger diameter what's crazy though is check this out is the pad doesn't even cover a hundred percent of the rotor so I mean you could get a lot more stopping power in there if they would have covered that up you know engage the full rotor you still get the leverage advantage of a larger diameter rotor uh, and the pads are just slightly bigger and the pistons are bigger so it should equal out to a better braking performance but really they could have gotten a lot more because they're missing half an inch worth of material there anyway um, that's it uh, Put the knuckle on top i'm gonna have to take this in now and get it the front end aligned a little tip for you if you're doing this is these bushings for the control arms both of them that the rear one and the front one you want to leave loose until you get the wheels on it and the truck back on the ground then torque those down otherwise if you do it now those those rubber bushings in there are going to be in a really bad bind and then when you set it on the ground they're going to be really stretched into one position instead of kind of being in a neutral position um, since the last video I can't remember if I showed you um, the, obviously the calipers were installed but I put in the stainless steel braided hose that was a really simple job bled it all out got everything good to go 
So now I've just got left to put the tires back on it and my little helper came in um, and get this thing aligned and be back on the road. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this and any questions you can email me or message me or whatever but uh, this is not my typical 6.5 diesel stuff so if you tuned in for 6.5 stuff sorry about that but I did warn you in the first clip if you hung through to this point that's great have a good day thanks bye